Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to episode number four of Fusion Fridays. By the end of this video, you'll know how to take full control of the Fusion 360 timeline. In Fusion 360, the timeline is that lower bar that captures your design history. To demo some timeline tips in this video, I'm going to use the screwdriver that we 3D modeled in day number 14. I'll put a link to that video in the video description. The first timeline tip is that you can play back the design history. Now as you're learning Fusion 360, this can be a great way to learn from someone else's design. All you have to do is click the play button to the left of the timeline, and you'll see that it will instantly start walking you through each step. You can also click on the previous step button to go back to the previous step, the move to beginning button to go all the way to the beginning, the next step button to go to the next step, or the move to the end button to quickly go to the end of the timeline. I can also simply drag this slider around, which is referred to as rolling back the design. Or I can right click on a timeline feature and select Roll History Marker here, which will automatically place the marker at that feature. The second timeline tip is that you can turn on the component color swatch under the timeline options in the right hand corner here. This will label all of the features in your timeline per their component. And if I go to the Inspect menu and turn on the component color cycling toggle, you'll see that it will color the components to further help us see what features relate to each component. It's also important to note that it added the same color in the Fusion 360 browser. And if I click to activate a component, you'll see that the features in the timeline are isolated to only show features pertaining to the activated component. The third timeline tip is that you can right click on a feature in the Fusion 360 timeline and select Find in Browser. And you'll see that it will highlight the related features in the browser with these dashed lines. Now this is particularly helpful in a very large assembly file where the timeline may take up your entire screen. You can also do the opposite and right click on an object in the browser and select Find in Timeline, and you'll see that the timeline features are also highlighted with dashed lines. The fourth timeline tip is that you can suppress features and make them temporarily unavailable. To suppress a feature, simply right click on the feature and select Suppress. Now, suppress features do not display in the graphics window, and they will be dimmed in both the browser and the timeline. You'll notice that if I suppress the beginning of a feature that has others dependent on it, then it will suppress all of the dependent features. Or I can select a feature or occurrence that has nothing depending on it, and it will only suppress that one feature. The fifth timeline tip is that you can create groups to further organize your timeline, which can be helpful if your timeline is very long with a large assembly file. Now to group timeline features, I will hold down Command on Mac or Control on Windows and select all of these fillets. Then I'll right click and select Create Group. You'll see that it will immediately group the features and you can toggle the group open and closed by clicking on the plus or minus icon. I can also right click on the group, select Rename and rename this group to Fillets. Now, if you want to delete the group, you can select the group, hit the delete key, and then make sure you're only deleting the group and not its contents. Unless you do want to delete everything, you can select that option as well. Now, the sixth timeline tip is that you can right click on an individual feature and rename that, similar to how we can rename groups. If I right click on the first fillet, I can rename this front of handle which may help me later on if I were trying to find this specific fillet. Now this really depends on your workflow and personal preference as you can always select features in the timeline and look at the corresponding highlight in the graphics window. 
The seventh timeline tip is that you can create selection sets. Now a selection set is a way to select a number of different components or features in a complex assembly in which you don't have to keep selecting them one by one. Selection sets can help you spend less time selecting and more time focus on designing. Now to create a selection set, I'll simply hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows, right click on one of the features, and select create selection set. Now I could also do the same by selecting multiple components or bodies in the Fusion 360 browser. Then you'll notice in the browser, the selection sets will be grouped in a folder. And you can click on the selection icon to quickly select all of its objects. You can also right click on the selection button and you'll have a number of options. So again, this selection set really only becomes useful in very large assemblies and files, especially if you need to keep selecting components or features to suppress them or make any other changes all at once. The eighth and final timeline tip is that you can drag features around to fix errors in your model. Probably one of the most common errors occurs when using the shell feature. If I take a look at this other example, you'll see that I shelled this box out. Now, if I wanted to add a fillet to the corner, it's going to ruin the box and it will no longer have a solid edge all the way around. To fix this, I can simply click and drag on the fillet and release it before the shell command, and you'll see that now the shell is applied after the fillet, which fixes the model. Now keep in mind that moving features around is kind of a last resort. I highly recommend sketching out your designs before working in Fusion, which will allow you to think about these sort of things before they happen. Otherwise, you'll find that sometimes sliding these timeline features around can cause more errors than it fixes. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.